A hijacked Boeing 767 slams into New York's World Trade Center. Two airliners are used in the rush hour attack. The entire complex is destroyed and an untold number of people are dead and injured. The streets of the world's financial capital are seized with terror, people fleeing in blind panic. A third hijacked airliner crashes into Washington's defense epicenter, the Pentagon. A fourth jumbo crashes in Pennsylvania. President Bush is flown to a secure military base. Freedom itself was attacked this morning by a faceless coward. And freedom will be defended. Good evening and welcome to a Channel 4 News special after the most devastating terrorist attack in the history of the United States. One terrifying hour, four hijacked airliners, many passengers aboard, even now, seven hours after the tragedy began, new details and images are coming in all the time. No one knows the true scale of the human carnage. America is sealed, all borders and airports closed, communications in chaos. Here, too, all flights have been banned over central London. The financial markets are in tatters. All that news in full, and we discuss America's response and the implications for global security against terrorist attacks. An unknown number of casualties in an atrocity beyond anyone's comprehension. Tonight, America is a country literally cut off from the rest of the world. With all those international flights grounded, many turned round in mid-air across the Atlantic and all borders closed. The attacks were launched with a devastating precision, hijacked airliners destroying the World Trade Center in New York and smashing through the Pentagon in Washington, D.C. Defense chiefs have put the country onto an emergency footing. The armed forces are on high alert. President Bush vowed to hunt down those behind the attacks. He said, terrorism against our nation will not stand. World leaders from Tony Blair to Yasser Arafat have expressed their outrage. Lindsay Taylor reports now on the day that America came under assault. At first, no one can believe it, but it's all too real. The World Trade Center in flames, smoke spewing from the upper floors. A gaping hole in one of the center's two 110-story towers. It's been caused by an aircraft crashing straight into it. It seems initially as though there's been a terrible accident. As witnesses try to understand what's unfolding, suddenly the senses are challenged beyond comprehension from the side of the tower on the left. The whole building just exploded for more. The whole top part. Okay. The building's still intact. People are running up the streets. Uh, am the I still connected? Before the world's eyes, a second plane has ploughed directly into the center's other tower. An amateur cameraman filming at a distance caught the moment of horror. Oh, oh my God! Oh, Jesus! Oh, my God! 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 With such images come a sickening dawning. One such plane crash might have been an accident. Two must be deliberate. One of the USA's greatest institutions has been deliberately targeted. America is under attack. As we're fixated by the images of the burning buildings, it's impossible to imagine what is happening inside. Two relatively large passenger jets disappear inside the huge structures. The casualties must be enormous. Then images that will haunt for years to come. On some of the floors, survivors of the initial impacts appear at the windows. Their exits blocked by the destruction and carnage inside. All they can do is signal for help. They can see and smell freedom, but no one can reach them hundreds of feet up. With events to come, it's unlikely any of these people will survive. Around this time, President Bush vows to hunt down those responsible for the atrocity. But even as he speaks, it emerges that the US Capitol has also been hit. The Pentagon in Washington, nerve center of the US military, struck by another crashed passenger aeroplane. US establishments had increased security since the World Trade Center bombing in 1993, but it wasn't enough to prevent this, a series of blatant and seemingly unstoppable attacks. The FBI had been investigating a series of hijacks today, but by then the planes were already close to completing their deadly missions. This is the worst nightmare for the US security establishment. 
a strike at the heart of government and the people. But back in New York, it's not over. The first of the Trade Center towers collapses like a house of cards. Gone are the hopes of escape of those who survived the initial impact. Hundreds of tons of masonry falling to the ground where emergency service workers, onlookers and others have been trying to help. Everything just went black. Everything came down, glass are popping. People got hurt, stuff went on top of them. And it was a big explosion. Everything got dark, real dark, like snow. You can see behind me, oh, this is not snow. This is all from the building. It was a terrible nightmare. Then the second nightmare. If there was panic before, it's now out of control, as an already appalling situation gets worse and worse. At a stroke, the streets of the most powerful and well-defended nation in the world are filled with fear. It's still not known who carried out such attacks or what motivation there could be for crashing planes full of civilians into skyscrapers full of people going about their lives. It's estimated the numbers of dead will run into tens of thousands, but no one yet really knows. No one can take in the enormity of what has happened. No one has the experience of dealing with death and destruction on this sort of scale. No one knows why it happened, and no one knows quite how America will respond. Lindsay Taylor, unimaginable images from New York. So let's just take a step back and go through what happened and when. The four attacks were launched with frightening speed. First thing this morning, just before 9 a.m. New York time, a hijacked jet smashed into one of the twin trade towers in New York's lower Manhattan. At 9.18, millions watching television already at the first blaze saw another plane crash into the second tower. As panic spread throughout New York, another hijacked plane slammed into the Pentagon in Washington, D.C., home of the Department of Defense. Then a car bomb exploded at the Department of State. A hijacked American Airlines jumbo jet from Newark to San Francisco also crashed near Pittsburgh in Pennsylvania, thought to be targeted at Camp David. The World Trade Center was at the heart of New York's financial district. 50,000 people worked there every day. At seven minutes past 10 New York time, the South Tower of the World Trade Center collapsed. 20 minutes later, it was followed by the North Tower. The cost in terms of human life is still impossible to calculate. New Yorkers are describing their city as a war zone. There's already panic buying of food and water. Mayor Rudolph Giuliani said a horrendous number of lives have been lost. One of the world's most famous landmarks, the World Trade Center itself, lies in ruins. Krishnan Guru Murthy reports now on the day's terrible events in New York. On the ground just after nine o'clock, the people of Manhattan still had no idea of either what exactly had happened or what was about to happen. Move it, come on! At this stage, two aircraft had crashed into the World Trade Center towers, but nobody imagined they could actually collapse. Yes, I was right there. I was in the I was down in the basement, came down, all of a sudden the elevator blew up, smoke. I dragged the guy out, his skin was hanging off. I was just standing here watching the World Trade Center after the first after the first plane hit. I just saw a second plane come in from the south and hit the south tower halfway between the, the bottom and the top of the tower. It's got to be a, a terrorist attack. I can't tell you anything more than that. I saw the plane hit the building. Office workers streamed out of the area, traumatized, many with no idea what had happened to their colleagues. And we heard a big bang, and then we saw smoke coming out, and everybody started running out, and we saw the plane on the other side side of the building and there was smoke everywhere and people are jumping out the windows over there they're jumping out the windows i guess because they're trying to see themselves i don't know and, and i don't know everybody just doesn't know where to go they won't let everything 
everything is blocked off. You can't even, they're telling us to get out, but there's nowhere to go. 